Some may think of her as the gunner of the series. Others think of her as the unfortunate rabbit who gets pranked on and blamed for everything. And when you're sick, count on her to deliver you a suppository. I will refer to her as Raisin Udongain Inaba. Really? Did the name have to be that long? Hello, Magia here and welcome back to another episode of Character Profile. The series where I take an in-depth look of a character from games, printworks, fan related and anything that could be attributed to Raisin will be talked about. The last video, we covered the strongest fairy of Gensokyo, though debatable with Clown Piece now, Chiruno. I mentioned that Raisin would be next and I made do with my promise, I think, if I even promised at all. Anyway, the point is to get ready to watch the character profile for Raisin Udongain Inaba. Name and their meaning. Unlike the last video, this section is going to be long. Fuck. Anyway, her full name is Raisin Udongain Inaba. Originally, her name was written in Katakana as Raisin as shown on the screen. But in order to blend in on Earth, she changed the spelling to this Raisin and adopted the surname Udongain from Eren. Note the Gain is pronounced the same way as the English word Gain. Her name should be written as Udong Gain in Romanji on the screen right now, and possibly as Udong Gain in French. Inaba, drawn from Te Inaba, is a name Kaguya uses for all the rabbits in Iente as she has trouble distinguishing between them. I would have called Kaguya out on her laziness to distinguish them, but after seeing Silent Sinner, I can see why she stuck with Inaba. Eren gave Raisin the surname Udong Gain from the lunar Udong a plant created by Lunarians which blooms into the jeweled branch of Horai in the presence of impurity. On the moon, seeing an Udong blossom is cause for alarm, while on Earth it is legendary for its beauty. As such, Kage is unsure whether Eren was thinking of Raisin as a cannery to measure the effects of impurity on themselves or as a mundane thing that would only become beautiful when brought to Earth. Maybe it's a bit of both. In canon, Eren is the only one who is allowed to call Raisin by the name Udong or Udongain, though she also calls her Raisin from time to time, particularly when she is not present. Kaguya is seen to use both Inaba and Raisin. The characters for Raisin literally mean something like Bell Hermit and Udongain, House of Plantain Flowers. Titles ending in that kanji or in were typically granted to Japanese noblewomen in their old age to indicate their special contribution to a temple or their high place in society and carry a sense of great nobility and culture. A noble rabbit, you don't see that every day, I think. There are several theories of where the name Raisin comes from, and oh boy is there a few. The first Raisin meaning spring of sweet water. Some say this was the source of the immortality elixir in the Chinese legend of Chungai, and let's just end it at that when it comes to Chungai. The second raisin, meaning spirit toad, but which due to a confused lead by the kanji is now used to refer to moon rabbits or the moon itself. The third raisin, meaning cold war, the time at which human exploration of the moon started. The fourth and last raisin, also called as zero sen, meaning Zero Fighter as in the Japanese naval designation for the famous Mitsubishi A6M Zero Fighter plane, which may be a reference to Raisin's military background. Incidentally, in German, Raisin means travel or voyage as well as to travel. There is also a species of rabbit known as the Deutsche Raisin, uh, German, but this origin is generally thought unlikely. More loosely, Raisin is a definite singular for Raisi in Norwegian, which means journey or trip, as in taking drugs. Character Appearance After that long section, let's work on their appearance. In Imperishable, Raisin has red eyes, long light purple hair, and long rumpled rabbit ears. Like all members of the Lunar Defense Corp, her ears stand up straight and are decorated with two accoutrement-like buttons. Her outfit consists of a long sleeved black business suit over a white skirt, along with a beige skirt white socks, and red shoes. Her left lapel is decorated with a crescent moon shaped insignia and a pocket square in her left shirt pocket. In Phantasmagoria, Raisin's jacket is removed and she wears a purple skirt. There is a clip on her necktie in the shape of a carrot, identical to Tay's. Her alternate outfit makes her shirt black and her tie yellow. 
In Scarlet Weather, she wears a short-sleeved white shirt, a red belt, and a blue skirt. Her alternate outfits gives her a dark green dress, ears, and eyes, and a light green shirt and hair. In Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom, she wears the same short-sleeved skirt but with a violet belt and a light red skirt. In Urban, she wears an outfit similar to her previous playable appearance with the exception of her skirt, which now has a white horizontal stripe near the bottom of the skirt, and her belt, which is now red. The carrot-shaped necktie is larger compared to her previous one. Her hair now reaches past her legs and her socks are now unfolded and reaches her knees. Her tail is noticeably larger in her artwork in the game, although her game sprite in action doesn't showcase it. Appearance in games and print work Let's discuss where Raisin has shown up over the years. Her first appearance would be in Imperishable Night as the Stage 5 boss. She hid in Iente as to avoid the Lunar Emissaries who might have came to Earth. Whichever team you chose to investigate the night, you'll encounter Raisin as she tries to stop the team from continuing any further in the mansion. She fails though and the team continues on. In Phantasmagoria A Flower View, she was worried about Tay running off and seems more level headed than most of the other characters. Although she doesn't know what's causing the flower incident, she decides to investigate by going wherever the flowers are blooming. And shoot the bullet, Aya goes around taking pictures of people and their Damaku, and Raisin is of no exception. She shows up in Scarlet Weather Raspity and Hisu Tensoko. In Scarlet, although most of the weird weather had disappeared, Raisin was still worried about the earthquakes and went to investigate the incident. And once more in Hisu Tensoko, she's a playable character but doesn't have a story mode. Her next appearance is only a cameo as she's in Hopeless Masquerade as a background character with the members of Iente at the Human Village. There she mostly watches the match and wakes Kaguya up when she's about to sleep. Her next appearance would be her ascension of sort. Legacy. It only took her about, well, 10 fucking years before she reappeared in a main game. Anyway, a weird spider-like looking probe came crashing down into the Yokai Mountain and started roaming around. Eren and Kaguya are aware of what's happening and sends Raisin to deliver Raymond and her friends the Ultramarine Orb Elixir, which is how we got the point device mode. Raisin is unique in this game as since she was originally a Lunarian, her dialogue shows that she's known a few of these bosses before. Now this is different as her next appearance is in Urban. And as you know, Urban is 14.5 while Legacy was 15, but there's a reason for that. Raisin's story takes place after Legacy. Another peculiar thing about it is that Raisin is the first character to have an exclusive appearance. For those who don't know, you can only play Raisin in the PS4 version. It makes sense given Urban is the first official Toho game to be released onto a console. Pretty much Raisin is guarding the forest and Ianete, and people are asking Raisin questions as the cast realized the Urban legend started because of a resident from the moon, meaning Sagumi. Let's look at Raisin when it comes to print works. She shows up in Bohemian where Aya makes an article about Raisin where the rabbit girl was protesting that Raymond was using rabbit meat in the stew served at the shrine banquet. To be fair, I can understand why. Imagine going to a restaurant and they were serving you human meat. I think you would react, although it'd be less of a protest and more of a beatdown if you ask me. Raisins in Perfect Memento where Aku is writing an article on her. She shows up in Strange and Oriental as secondary characters. For Oriental, she has a cameo in chapter 12 and 18. In Silent Sinner, she was a secondary character alongside the other members of Iente. In Cage and Lunatic, she was a secondary character. In Walton Horde Hermit, she's a secondary character with a few cameos. You can see her in Chapter 18, 20, 21, 28, and 31. In Forbidden Scrollery, she's also a secondary character. Her cameo appearances were in Chapter 10, 21, 32, and 34. She's also in Strange Creators of Outer World Volume 2 in a profile and cross review section. The next two work will be debatable for some. She appears in Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth as a main character with Tay. You may be asking why. The reason being is despite it considered an official work, the canicity of it, if I said that right, is somewhat debatable. Hell, I was even questioning it myself. Given my work with the interesting Toe Facts series, you can imagine my surprise when a funny work like this is canon and makes some of the facts you've been working with a little off. The over-the-top comedic nature and due to Zune reportedly being only loosely involved in its creation. Still, at the end of the day, Zune did give the thumbs up for this work to be printed, so take it with a grain of salt. 
just to know I will be using facts from Inaba when it comes to the profile. So whenever I mention anything about Raisin and the Inaba print work, you're allowed to discount it if you wish. Personality When it comes to her personality, Raisin seems to have one of the more stable and balanced personalities in Gensokyo, which is ironic given her powers. Occasionally, Raisin is shown to look down on Earthlings for being inferior to Lunarians. Notably in Silent Sinner, she bursts into laughter on seeing Romilia's attempt at building a spaceship, only to be corrected by Eren that it's astonishingly well designed. Don't discredit us Earthlings there, Raisin. Aki says in Phantasmagoria that her cowardice and selfishness are her greatest sins. You can clearly see what Aki is referring to. Her profile in Scarlet Weather says she's not a nice person, merely good at acting the way people expect her to, and that she doesn't think like a human. To be fair, she's a Lunarian, so it makes sense she doesn't think like a human. She does get some character development though towards Legacy. By the time of Legacy, however, she has spent longer in Earth's impure environment and seems to have become more genuine for it. Despite Raisin's moment of mocking Romelia's rocket and believing Lunarians are superior, in Legacy, she admits to Saren after their battle that she thinks of herself as an Earth Rabbit nowadays and displays outright contempt towards the Lunarians for their selfishness. Both Doranami and Sagumi tell her that they can sense the earthiness coming off of her due to Raisin's acquired impurity. Symposium reveals that she's a fan of Jochu Gikaku concerts, meaning she loves that punk rock music. In Legacy, she's the least fight happy out of all the playable protagonists and actually regularly attempts using reason. Not that it actually works at preventing her from having to fight since being a moon rabbit and deserter means that almost everyone has a reason to try fighting her. At least you try to be civil here, unlike some humans. Raisin will follow orders, but don't expect her to be happy about it. According to Dorimi, even this level of actual loyalty is rare for a moon rabbit, and Raisin probably only developed it after she came to Earth. Occupation slash jobs Raisin's first occupation as we know now was she was part of the Lunar Defense Corp until she abandoned it during the Lunar War in 1969. She later came to Gensokyo and asked for asylum in Iente. She now works for Eren in Kaguya. At Iente, she's Alec Kaguya's pet and Eren's student. She's also the bodyguard of the place when need be as shown in Imperishable and Urban. She also sells medicine to human villagers made from Iente, although she is disguised at the village. General Information Slash Backstory Raisin is a moon rabbit and being a moon rabbit, she's stronger than normal rabbits. Moon rabbits are seen as tools by Lunarians and are used for a large variety of tasks including farming, pounding, medicine, cleaning, and as soldiers in the moon's war effort. Pretty much they're the peasants. Moon rabbits are not considered to be yokai by the moon's inhabitants and other Raisin displays no understanding of the term. However, where the moon rabbits came from has not been explained, and as the Lunarians claim to have created yokai in order to regulate the earth, it is possible that the rabbits were created by similar means. Explained in the occupation slash job sections, but she was part of the Lunar Defense Corp until she abandoned it during the Lunar War in 1969 after the Apollo 11 invasion. She later came to Gensokyo and asked for asylum in Iente. She now works for Eren in Kaguya, and as mentioned, she's either a pet, a student, or a medicine seller to the villagers, although disguised. Although she's considered a moon rabbit in Legacy, it's been said that Raisin is no longer but an earth rabbit as she's been living on earth for so long that she's been tainted with impurity. Knowing that she can no longer return to being a moon rabbit again, she now proudly proclaims herself to be an earth rabbit of Gensokyo. In her story mode in Urban, spoiler alert, I'll give you some time to skip if you want. Alright, let's begin. Even though the incident isn't resolved, she decides she'll get to the bottom of it even without Eren's help, as she's an Earth Rabbit now. Repping them Earth Rabbits. Titles Let's check out some of Raisin's titles throughout the series. She has Lunatic Moon Rabbit, Sight Shaking Yokai Rabbit, Lunatic Red Eyes, Red Eyes of the Mountain Vapor, Moon Rabbit on Earth, and lastly, Taboo of Seeing, Kuni Kuni Rabbit of Sanity. Possessions, if any. The only possession that's noteworthy would be her rabbit megaphone slash gun thing. It's unique as it's able to transform its shape. In Legacy, where it first appeared, it seemed to be the size of a handgun. 
In urban, it's much bigger in her profile art, while in-game sprite is much smaller. In urban, it's able to transform into a shotgun. Plus, she's able to make another copy as this clip shows that she's using two of them at once. It's the most I can gather as I don't have a PS4 to test Urban out and all of Raiden's moves slash spell cards, so please excuse me on that. Ability slash powers. Given her titles, you can imagine she's going to have some sort of abilities associated with her eyes. She's able to manipulate insanity. Raiden has the ability to scent and manipulate waves of all kinds, localized in her lunatic red eyes. Her signature use of this ability is manipulating brainwaves through eye contact, allowing her to induce madness or hallucinations depending on the strength of her opponent's will. By increasing the frequency of brainwaves, she can make a person short-tempered and irrational, or by reducing them can leave her target apathetic and depressed. Raisin can also manipulate light and sound waves to deceive the senses indirectly from concealing the paths of her Demaku to creating after images of herself to casting wide area illusions that cause people to get lost. Finally, she is capable of releasing waves from her eyes in a destructive blast. Raisin is immune to the abilities of the three fairies of light. She was able to see an invisible Sunny, hear a silent Luna, and escape stars detection since they were based on waves, though she seems unable to replicate stars ability with her own. Aside from her eyes, she's got some abilities related to being a moon rabbit. Moon rabbits can send ESP waves and receive them with their ears, forming a sort of psychic network where they share feelings and rumors. Raisin can still participate in this network despite the physical and spiritual distance between Gensokyo and the moon. Raisin has been depicted emanating ESP waves from her eyes, but it is unknown whether this is the usual method or an example of her general wave manipulation abilities, or indeed if her wave manipulation is just an advanced form of this ability. Music! We're now in the music portion. So Raisin has two tracks really, her stage theme and her boss theme. For this profile and future ones, I'm going to be showcasing the official remixed version as well, so you can listen and compare the original and remixes. Starting off with the stage 5 theme in Imperishable, it is Cinderella Cage, Kagome Kagome. Her stage 5 boss theme in Imperishable is Lunatic Eyes, Invisible Full Moon. All the next tracks will be remixes of her boss theme. This one is from Phantasmagoria. The next one is from Scarlet Weather. This last track is her newest mix from Urban Legend. Gameplay Since we're in the gameplay portion, let's talk about how Raisin has functioned throughout the years. In Phantasmagoria, her speed was 4 star, average, like Chiruno's. Her charge speed is 3.5 star, which was average as well. Her scope type was a rotary eye type. Her focus speed was 2.5, which was above average. Her scope generation speed is 5 star, which is also above average. Her charge level 1 attack was Mine Explosion. It shot out a huge bullet and it explodes on contact and lingers for a bit. Her charge level 2 is Wave Sign, Lunar Surface Ripple, Luna Wave. A circle of regular bullets and a circle of dot bullets both appear. They both spin outwards into creating stripes of staggered lines. Her charge level 3 is Wave Sign, Lunar Surface Ripple, Luna Wave. Here, traditionally, Raisin's bullet spins out of a circle. However, they spin off in arcs, covering a certain amount of degree per arc. 
As a result, instead of curved stripes coming out, wide soft of bullets appear instead. Her charge level 4 is Scatter Sign, Dream of Prosperity, Luna Megaopolis. This is her boss belt and loads of bullets will be coming as expected. She'll also be throwing out some explosions looking similar to your mine explosion minus the giant bullet. Her EX attacks, abilities that try to hinder your opponent, is Metaphysical Mine. Here a pulsating circle will spawn at your opponent and it will fall down and explode only when near your character. Now let's look at her in the most current game, Legacy. Now in this game, her unfocused shot was Lunatic Gun. Her shots are bullet related and in unfocus, extra purple bullets spawn on the sides. Her focus shot is Mind Wave. The bullets are now waves instead of the purple bullets and the waves are consolidated. Her spell card is probably one of the most unique ones in the main games in my opinion. The name is Barrier Wave Evil Undulation. The spell card gives Raisin 3 shields before she can lose her life. Her hitbox is bigger though from it. Unlike other defensive slash barrier spell cards like Nidori slash Marissa in Subterranean and in DDC's Marissa Shot Type B, this one lasts until either the stage is done or you get hit. The other ones are usually a one hit rule or duration base. If you're very skilled plus you use Raisin, you can easily have more lives than you're used to though be prepared for the bigger hitboxes. Finishing the main games, let's look at her in the fighters. In Scarlet Weather, Raisin is an unpredictable foe with a variety of deceptive attacks. Raisin's melee attacks have a good range and some allow her to swat opponents out of the air. She is able to flow from attack to attack due to the hit stun of her normals and bullets. Her projectiles may be slow but they are dense and persistent, allowing her to quickly poke at mid-range openings. She also has a fantastic close range pressure game and heavy corner chip damage. However, Raisin herself is quite slow. Raisin is a character who benefits most from her player's ability to use her tricky skill set effectively. Some of her pros are high chip damage potential, strong stagger and spirit damage potential, dense, fast cancelling bullets allow her to both stay safe and punish easily, small, hurt box, especially when crouching, good range on command normals, invisible dash allows her to pass through opponents, strong and unique okizume, uh, meaning pressuring an opponent while they're getting up after being knocked down techniques, unique abilities to break cards and inflict confusion. Some of her cons however are slow dash, walk speed and jump, combos require precise cancels and timing, alternative specials and spell cards have limited use or show no versatility, short tech roll make it harder to escape the corner at times, has no invincible reversals outside of universal system mechanics. A notable thing to mention is Raisin turns invisible while dashing forward on the ground allowing her to pass through opponents. The next game will be harder as I can't actually play it. In Urban, Raisin is a fleshed out character. Range is prevalent in her gameplay as in this game she has an actual gun. And as mentioned in my possession section, the gun is able to transform into shotgun and dual pistols. I also can't comment on her spell cards as once more I don't have access in playing it. So as far as I know, this is the most I can work with, so I'm sorry about that. Relationships Now that we're in the relationship sections, let's see what friends she's made over the years. To start off, let's talk about her master, or one of them anyway, Eren Yaga Koro. Eren is Raisin's master, and as of this moment, Raisin works for Eren after seeking asylum due to the Lunar War in 1969. She follows whatever Eren's orders are, even if she doesn't like it. She's a student to Eren and helps sell medicine to the villagers and uses her telepathic abilities to gain intelligence on the lunar capital. In the Enema of the Moon and Enema of the Earth, Raisin suffers through punishment time at the hands of her master Eren who sometimes knocks her out for days or weeks at a time. Like I said, take the Enema work to your discretion. Next on the list will be Kaguya Horizon. Kaguya is another person Raisin must serve. In the Inaba series, she takes the brunt of whatever whims Kaguya is having. That doesn't sound pleasant. The next person would be the oh so prank loving Tay Inaba. Raisin helps Tay manage the rabbits at Iente, though Tay's carefree nature seems to bother her. In the Inaba series, Raisin is the favorite target for Tay's prank. Ain't that the truth? Next will be a small collection of relationships with the Lunar Capital people. Watatsuki no Toyohime and Yorihime were Raisin's former masters before Raisin fled to Earth. 
Despite her desertion, both sisters fondly miss her. In Legacy, she's shown indication of already knowing Seiran and Ringo, two moon rabbits, although little of their relationship with her is known. She also seems to serve under Sagumi Kishin, referring to her as Lady Sagumi or Sagumi-sama, who is willing to do any orders given by her. Fun slash interesting facts. Back when she first showed up, Razor's right hand is often depicted to be making a gun shape, which leads to fan assumption that she shoots the Mako in this manner, and she indeed does in Scarlet Weather. Some fans even depict Raisin holding an actual handgun in artwork. Those are all based on Zoom's words that her normal shots were modeled after a bullet. The revelation in Silent Sinner that all Moon Defense Corp Rabbit are drilled with rifles suggests that Raisin can also use the real thing. And as you know in Legacy, she's effectively seen holding what seems to be a bunny themed handgun. Same goes for the PS4 version of Urban Legend, where she is seen holding her rabbit gun, although a bigger version in the artwork. I mentioned this back in my interesting toll facts video, but Raisin's alternative outfits in Scarlet Weather in Hiso Tensoko is a homage to the Vocaloid characters like Hatsune Miku. Her other alternative outfits in Hiso Tensoko's are also homages to fellow Vocaloids like Rin and Len Kagamine, Luka Megurin, Meiko, Kaito, Gakupo, Kamui, and Gumi. Fanon stuff! We're into part 4 and this is where all the fun and crazy stuff happens. To begin with, let's talk about a video about Raisin. Raisin experienced a surge in popularity from the iOSYS video Overdrive. This video and its parodies are known on Nico Nico as the Lunatic Udon Gain series. Raisin is generally depicted as more of a normal person than the other inhabitants of Iente, being bullied by them or acting as a straight man for the antics. We did discuss she had the more stable personality, so it makes sense. Serious works dealing with Raisin usually focuses on her past as a deserter. This grew more common after Aki scolded her about it in Phantasmagoria, but less so after Silent Sinner showed the other moon rabbits as unexpectedly carefree and prone to exaggeration. When it comes to her pairings, she has three main ones, Tay, Eren, and Yomu. Tay's pranking can be interpreted as affectionate. Eren is depicted about caring deeply about Raisin as a student, being strict on her only so that she'll achieve her potential. While Raisin and Yomu have appeared together in a number of games, they rarely have any meaningful interactions. In fanworks, they're mainly depicted as bonding over their shared statuses as overworked servants, as well as their training in weapons. Generally, Yomu will be depicted as looking up to Raisin as her elder. Some fans call her Zayaku, uh, meaning suppository, because her bullets look like them. Many, many jokes have been made about this, often of a crude nature. In addition, some species of plantains carried seeds that are useful for constipation in irritable bowel syndromes, making them similar to function to rectal suppositories. Raisin's line, I'm just a useless little bunny, only good for my sex appeal, from the dojin work Drunkards and Iente by Omi Chicken has become notable amongst western fans, leading to portrayals of her as attractive but useless to a joke character level. Well, get blasted, I think. She is generally considered a newbie bait character as she brings many fans into the series, but most find new favorites and leave her behind. Huh, was not expecting that to be honest. She is sometimes shown as a nurse in fan works in reference to her training under Eren. And lastly, a sizable number of fan works depict her as friendly towards humans as opposed to her fairly antisocial personality in canon. Pairings! I already mentioned a few pairings, but it doesn't hurt to revisit them. The first on this list will be Reisa and Yomu or Udo Myon or U Myonji. They are both 5th stage bosses and in Perishable, Yomu concludes that Eren is similar to Yuriko in regards to treatment of their servants. There is also a contrasting nature of their weapons, where Yomu uses a sword whereas Raisin uses something very bullet like. The phrase Udo Myon while already no Jutoho Ihan, Udo Myon is my Jutoho violation, 
is commonly used to declare support for this pairing. Jutoho is an abbreviation for the Swords and Firearms Control Law Japan passed in 1958. A pairing based on a law. That's different. The next pairing will involve the two rabbits, Raisin Udonge Inaba and Tei Inaba or Tei Wengi. Canonically, Tei often plays practical jokes on Raisin or frames her so that Eren can punish her. Going down the list, let's talk about an immortal here, Eren and Raisin or Erenji. Eren is frequently shown, even in the Inaba series, to subject Raisin to medical experiments and corporal punishments. As a side note regarding Kaguya, Raisin's occupation as seen in the profile is Kaguya's pet. We also have another immortal to discuss, Raisin and Kaguya. Usually no different than Raisin and Eren, though sometimes the relationship is consensual, owing to Kaguya's gentle, feminine personality. The last one is the most unique for Raisin, Raisin and Alice. Very little connects the two other than their reputation as cool-headed straight man. This ship is most likely a reference to Alice in Wonderland, with Raisin representing the white rabbit. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed Raisin's character profile. It took a while for me to make it after the voting back in Sanae's video, but I finally did it. Like always, what did you guys enjoy about Raisin? Do you think she's quite the gunner? Do you feel sorry for her being the guinea pig? Or do you think this moon, wait, I mean Earth Rabbit has more to bring to the series. Before we end it off, I want you guys to vote on the next profile, although I will narrow it this time. The next list will involve one of the extra stage boss characters in the series. So in order, we have Flandre, Ran, Yukari, Moku, Suwako, Koishi, Nue, Mamizo, Raiko, or Hekajia. So choose whoever you feel deserves a character profile and I'll make it as soon as possible. But like always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe or else Raisin will suffer more from Eren and we don't want that. I hope not anyway. Either way, this is Magia and thanks again for watching.